This is a video presentation of preparation of test samples, analytical services method number one. Sample preparation is an important step for ensuring the homogeneity and suitability of the sample to be representative for the analysis. Before a sample can be analyzed, it must be properly prepared so that an accurate test result can be obtained. The goal of this sample preparation method is to generate a mixed sample that is homogeneous, uniform, and finely divided to yield a large surface area. Homogenization is achieved by finely grinding and blending the solid samples and vigorously shaking and mixing the liquid samples. Homogenization ensures that all of the sample material will be of consistent content throughout. In other words, the same test results would ideally be achieved regardless of which portion of the sample is used. As a general rule, it is advisable to process the entire submitted sample when possible. A meat sample may require bone removal and, in specific cases, the subcutaneous and intermuscular fat should be trimmed. Please follow specific sampling and subsampling techniques described in the official methods for analysis. The analytical services method for preparation of test samples focuses primarily on samples comprised of meat, animal feeds, grains, and dairy products. However, these sample preparation techniques could be applied to a wide variety of sample matrices. The sample preparation method described here is based on these official methods. The official methods we refer to describe the sampling of materials such as meat, animal feed, cheese, and milk. This presentation is simply an overview or a summary of the preparation of test samples. Before attempting any of these techniques, it is mandatory to read the test method in its entirety. The good laboratory practices associated with safety and personal protective equipment represented in this video are simply the safety requirements of the FAPC Analytical Services Laboratories. Furthermore, all samples received by analytical services are considered to be for testing purposes only and not for human consumption. Therefore, food safety and handling procedures do not apply. We urge you to determine what specific GLP and safety requirements are necessary for your own applications. Some of the recommended guidelines for good laboratory practices include take measures to maintain the integrity of the samples throughout the process by limiting exposure to air and non-suitable storage temperatures. The process of blending or grinding creates heat, which can degrade samples, so chopping and grinding times should remain in the 30 to 60 second range. Wearing gloves when handling samples and items associated with the test to prevent cross-contamination. Oil, moisture, or any other material on bare hands can affect the sample integrity, thus resulting in inaccurate data. Keep samples clearly labeled from preparation to disposal. Record observations at the time they are made. And exercise safety precautions at all times by using the specific safety supplies listed in the method. Additionally, exercise caution when working with industrial grinders and blenders, as well as with knives and liquid nitrogen. It is advisable to wear safety glasses or a face shield to protect your eyes from debris or chemicals. Cut-proof gloves to protect your hands when cutting, and a lab coat and laboratory apron, as well as temperature-resistant gloves when working with liquid nitrogen. The following materials or equivalent are required for preparing most samples. Cutting board, knives, food processor, industrial grinders, coffee grinder, blenders, mortar and pestle, liquid nitrogen, strainer for freezing meat, cheese, and other sample matrices in liquid nitrogen, thermal gloves, spatulas, tweezers, plastic bags, labels, permanent marker, latex gloves, safety glasses and face shield, lab coat and rubber apron, hearing protection, shaker, or vortexer for the vigorous mixing of liquid samples. Determine what type of sample must be homogenized. The sample type will determine the conditions selected according to an official method that best suits the sample matrix. 
This chart details various types and sizes of meat samples and specific suggestions for the appropriate preparation, homogenization method, and storage of each type and size of sample. The variables listed may be adjusted, if necessary, to accommodate the sample and to correspond with similar official methods better suited for the sample matrix. Because these sample preparation techniques could be applied to a wide variety of materials, we will demonstrate only a few types of examples of sample preparation. In this presentation, we will demonstrate the preparation of a meat sample of approximately 0.5 kilograms a summer sausage, and canola seed. Our first demonstration is for fatty acid profile on the semimembranous muscle. Carefully use a knife and cutting board to remove the bone, trim the intramuscular fat, as well as the subcutaneous fat. Cut all of the desired meat sample into small cubes. Note, if possible, this step should be performed in a cold room, such as a walk-in refrigerator or freezer. Store the blender container in the refrigerator or freezer to keep it cold. Using liquid nitrogen, freeze a few cubes at a time and blend them in a cold stainless steel blender container. Blend meat until powder light by using pulses of 30 to 60 seconds at a time. Quickly remove the pulverized meat from the container by scraping with a spatula and transferring to a plastic bag. Repeat the process until the entire sample has been pulverized. Vacuum seal the sample bag and store it in the freezer until analysis. Next, we will demonstrate the preparation of a summer sausage sample. Sausage is prepared in a similar manner as the previous meat sample. When applicable, Carefully remove the sausage casing by using a knife and cutting board. Cut the sausage into small pieces and homogenize by using the liquid nitrogen and blender method previously described with the meat sample. Samples should be stored in a freezer and remain frozen until use. This sample preparation process using liquid nitrogen and a blender will be similar for other soft, sticky, or oily samples such as cheese, processed meat products, and peanut butter treats. Our third example of sample preparation is a canola seed sample. For non-meat samples, refer to the parameters in this chart. As with all other samples, the goal is to create smaller pieces of material so that the mixture is as homogeneous as possible and to present a large surface area. A coffee grinder or a food processor will chop and mix the sample simultaneously. Use pulses of 20 to 30 seconds until the sample resembles powder. Continue to grind the entire sample and combine the ground portions if applicable. It is strongly recommended that dry, powdered samples be further homogenized with a mortar and pestle. After preparation, store samples in the most air-free packaging available and minimize exposure to open air. When preparing liquid samples, they must be thoroughly mixed immediately prior to analysis. In a tightly closed container, shake the sample vigorously. Alternatively, the sample may be placed on a vortexer. Keep samples frozen, refrigerated, or within the requested storage conditions until the time of analysis.